Today on Ag News, we're talking percentile scores and power scores for buying and selling of your bulls and cows. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Ag News. Uh, we're also going to be talking about um, accuracy, breed averages, lots of words here, Steve. Um, but basically what we're talking about is how good that cow or steer or bull or whatever you're buying or selling could be um, is, right? Absolutely. So we're grading that animal. That's right. So you've got some good information on how we should do this if you don't know already, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, how do we start off? What would be the first thing we need to do? Okay. Well, a lot of people just look at the bull, that we call that phenotype, how they look, structural uh -huh. correctness, all those sorts of, that's important. Mm -hmm. But also we want to know something about their genetics. And these are some of the tools that we can use mm -hmm. to evaluate those animals. Awesome. So uh, there's these individual pedigree, we heard that uh -huh. word, but that's about their ancestors. Yep. And these expected progeny differences, mm -hmm. they can be a combination of the ancestry, where they came from, but also maybe some of their own performance or their progeny. How did they perform? So that's the expected progeny difference. Here's some uh, example data. Uh, let's, we've got a trait. There's birth weight, weaning weight, yearling weight, and then milk. And there's the expected progeny difference. Uh, those are and those are accuracies down below. That's some where that data come from. Could be from the individual. Could be from its progeny that it's created. Maybe it's part from uh, uh, their uh, the parentage as well. So those are some numbers you might see. Let's say we're going to a bull test. So you may see something like this on an individual bull. Their expected progeny difference and the accuracy uh, of that number. When we look at accuracy, it's the reliability of that expected progeny difference. Now, if you go to a bull sale, typically those are yearling bulls. They don't have any progeny, so th there's not a lot of information there. So it's probably their accuracies are going to be a like a 0.1 or 0.3. They may be, their performance looks really great, that expected progeny difference, but we don't have a lot of information how accurate that is. Now, as the, the bull gets out there and breeding animals, uh, the breed associations keep track of that information on how their progeny perform, and so we get into higher accuracies. We talk about reference sires. That's been a bull that's been around a while. It's been used a lot. Think about artificial insemination and there's a lot of information on his progeny. So his EPD, expected progeny difference, is fairly accurate. What the accuracy um, number tells you is how extensively do you want to use that animal? If you're really interested in birth weight and you don't want a lot of calving difficulty, you can look at that expected progeny difference, but then look at the accuracy. And so you may want to use a bull that's has a lot of predictability on birth weight, mm -hmm. calving difficulty. Uh, think about heifers. A lot of times we may have issues uh, calving out heifers versus mature cows. So that's where accuracy can play at least one role uh, with these animals. Here's comparing expected progeny difference of two bulls. Mm -hmm. Bull A has a plus 35 for weaning weight. So that might mean, let's say they have calves that weigh 585. Bull B plus 10. Uh, has a 560 wing weight. So the difference is 25. Some, some simple math, as you mm -hmm. say. Here's how important to know breed average, though. What we just looked at, looked at I'm going to go back, those plus 35, plus 10. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It has to do with breed average. Don't assume breed average is zero. For okay. whatever reason, different breeds have different breed averages. So I want to know that breed average. Now, that you can go to this. Any breed, 
you can pull it up and see, okay, what's the breed average this particular time? Breed average changes probably about twice a year, so you want to, you can't keep the one from five years ago. You go and find what the current breed averages are, so say birth weight, uh, WW is weaning weight, then milk is how much milk is produced, mm -hmm. and YW is yearling weight. So the breed average is those uh, plus numbers. Notice they're not zero. Mm -hmm. Now we're looking at these bulls that are from that breed. Uh, so bull A is plus five. So he's he's going to have heavier calves uh, uh, compared to bull B, who's at a zero. So he's below breed average. So those would be lighter calves. Uh, weaning weight. Uh, if you want to increase weaning weight, bull A is probably the one to select. Breed average is 34. So that 45 is higher. Uh, Milk production, do you want more milk or less milk? Uh, that's, that's your choice. But if I wanted more milk, I'd go with perhaps bull B, plus 27 versus the breed average of 17. And yearling weight the same way. Look at the breed average and where that EPD stands on if you're going to affect change in your herd. Mm -hmm. uh, those are how you, you look at those EPDs, but you have to know breed average for, for that EPD to make any sense. Here's a birth weight example. Bull A, uh, birth weight of zero, bull B plus six. That expect difference between the animals, uh, about six pounds. Now, how much will my calves weigh? That's where you may have to check with the who you're buying the bulls from. Mm -hmm. What are some typical birth weights that they have? Uh, the EPD just tells you difference. It not you can't honestly say, well, an exact of that animal's going to have birth weights of 86.5. Well, we can compare bulls and we can expect to see the difference between those bulls as far as birth weight, weaning weight, that sort of thing. So what, back to what my calves weigh. Check with the producer, but we can expect bull A had heavier uh, weights at weaning versus bull B. There we see that difference, or birth weight. Here's an example. But now, Steve, way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw in a question here. We, 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 we're talking about bulls always. Now, will we, do we need to take in the, the mother of this animal to determine a little bit as well? Uh, even though, you know, bull A is, is throwing a, an 80-pound calf, but if that female may be not doing well, does, does that lower his score? How, how does that work? Absolutely. Do, do, do the, does the scores also partake into that? Um, it does. The expected progeny difference is information from both, quote, quote unquote, both, both sides together. of the family. Okay. And the progeny, we talked about mm -hmm. a reference sire, mm -hmm. well, that data goes back into that individual's okay. uh, So, so we, well. keep, we keep track of the females as well with scores too, correct? Yeah, if uh, they have the data. <laughs> if they have the, yeah, exactly, if they have the data. Yeah. But do they, what's, what's usually expected? Do, does people usually keep more track of the bull or the female? Email, or obviously to, it'd be idea to keep both, but yeah. ch chances are they're going to probably keep the bull more than the females? There's going to probably be more data on the bull because that bull, especially through AI, can be yeah. used on many, many, so, many cows. Right. That cow only produces so typically many, about one yeah, calf. And moves yeah. on. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Well, which bull would be profitable? And you might look at this as a system approach. We've looked at some individual numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, you you want to know how does the bull rank in the breed? You know that breed average, mm -hmm. whatever that number is? Mm -hmm. Well, in there, how much, wh where does that stand in the bull? So this is called a power score system. Roy Wallace mm -hmm. selects sires, who's deceased, but kind of kind of give credit to creating this, mm -hmm. looking at power scores. So this is performance when the animal's alive and a carcass. These are, you can create your own power score. It's just an example of using all this information. So we're gonna, it's kind of like golf. The lowest number is the better. Here we've got, mm -hmm. we've talked about individual EPDs. What if you're trying to do all this at once? Oh my. <laughs> well, so you think about birth weight, weaning weight, and yearling weight, and MM is maternal milk. Uh, terminal is these calves are not, none of these calves you're going to keep heifers. Maybe you just look at birth weight, weaning weight, and yearling weight, mm -hmm. and you take those EPDs, and we're giving equal weight to all those scores in the in the one above the divided by four 25 percent importance mm -hmm. the terminal since we're not keeping heifers it's uh, 33 percent and we have a cutoff and say we want 
our number to be lower than 65%. You can create your own number. Gotcha. Here's an example. We're using those EPDs at the top, expected progeny difference for bull A. And there the EPDs for expected progeny difference for bull B. And we look in the percentile ranks. Once again, you get this from the breed association, mm -hmm. the numbers, where this bull ranks. And so we've got that off a chart, we've put in that information, and then we just do the calculation. The bull A is the bull we want to buy. Uh, the, the other bull is kind of a well, below average bull. So this is how you take in maybe one way to take in all that information of how you want to use all these expected progeny differences. Mm -hmm. This is just for, you can do the same thing with carcass. These breed associations provide expected progeny difference for how the progeny marbling mm -hmm. uh, of, of, of calves that have been produced. Retail product is yield grade, how lean that product is. Mm -hmm. And then we can use other ways, uh, well we can get the fat, intramuscular fat from the packing plant or we're maybe doing uh, ultrasound. But anyway, yeah. you can look at carcass traits as well, plug it into a power score and say what do we want. Here's the uh, same thing, just looking at different ex expected progeny difference. Bull A, has uh, that's his percentile rank for intramuscular fat. Uh, bull B is 80%. Now that 20% means uh, that's a higher, actually a higher number. There's more intramuscular fat versus the other bull. But you can do these power scores to select your bulls. Hmm. Interesting. So is there, uh, again, uh, we re do we report these numbers to any particular organization? Yes, the registered cattle breeders okay. uh, would report this information from their bulls, mm -hmm. and from their, their uh, females, to the breed association, mm -hmm. and they compile that data. And so that's where that EPD number comes back to come the to. producer. Okay. And also they provide those percentile ranks and uh, accuracy scores. Uh -huh. So like I said, if I'm going to go buy cattle, registered yeah. cattle, this is the stuff I like to know to be halfway yeah. intelligent. Yeah. I want to show up at, with the, yeah. those EPDs, the accuracy, the breed average for mm -hmm. the breed, and those percentile rankings, and then I can make some decisions. Gotcha. So, um, and, and can I get those numbers? Uh, can anybody get those numbers or they have to request them? Or, or can you request them from a particular breed or a breed or a farm? Yeah, well you can check with the, the, the registered cattle producer mm -hmm. you're buying from. They okay. may well have and all that information. Okay. But you can go online and get that information from the breeds. Oh, they okay. have sire summaries Great. there. Well this is good information. I, I, I like this. So. Uh, um, I, we, I know we've got, uh, we're about out of time, so let's uh, move on to our next topic. And uh, again, we'll see everyone uh, on the next show.